It has, it, what's the speed of it? It's got a six six gigabytes of uh, RAM. What's the processor? What speed? Dual or quad core? <coughs> And how big's the hard drive? The hard drive is one gig. <laughs> I'm going to look the other way while somebody punches him in the face. <laughs> Hold on, the recording has started. <laughs> I was just kidding. Ha ha. <laughs> Skippy, it's one thing that you're incompetent with your schoolwork, but you, as a as a computer science major, you should know about your technology. I'm in 175. That's my defense. You're currently in 175. I'm currently in 175. Carrie can vouch for this. Switch. Oh, you're 175 too. Carrie. No, he's. Oh, she's like the professor. She's like the helping. Well, I'm mad at Carrie currently, so I'm. Oh, okay. What? I didn't get to play no video games. Who sat on that laptop? Who's laughing? Uh, her family's a member at the same country club as I am, so I had my yoga class last night. And then I do pasta night afterwards, and she was there with her family. And, and <laughs> yeah, what's, what's, what's the quote got on tape about the, <laughs> he just sat on my lap while I, <laughs> so uh, I was sitting at the bar eating pasta, and, and her and her little brother uh, came up, they were getting ready to go into the, this, this game room they had there to play video games, and I was mad at her that I didn't get invited to come play video games. There's a game room at the club, you never took me there? Yeah, it's on the main floor by the main restaurant. Well, next time, they have, I think it's like 10 bucks for all you can eat food and all you can, uh, play video games. We'll check, we'll check you in, little yeah. Joey. Yeah, but he'll never play any video games, he'll just eat the food. Joey, what? <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Shut up. Somebody want to get the lights? I don't think so. Okay, so I have to catch myself up here. Yep. So we're in syntax analyzer. And this is inside. Shut up. All right, so we're in syntax an analyzer. Uh, we're going to read through all of our tokens inside of our uh, um, link list of token streams, which we built up here. Our link list called token stream. This guy's a collection of tokens. Then, so we'll read a token. We'll create a new node out of that token. Um, if we do not have a syntax tree, if we currently have no syntax tree, we go ahead and build a tree with the root node being that token. Makes sense? Otherwise, we already have a tree. If we already have a tree, we need to ask some questions. If the current token is an operator, then what do we do? We build a brand new syntax tree with this guy, and then we need to make some decisions. So after we build the brand new syntax tree, we ask, is the current syntax tree's root an operator? If it is, we're going to add temp tree to the right branch of the syntax tree. Else... Um, let's see, temp tree becomes the new tree and the syntax tree is added to temp tree. <laughs> Okay, let me minimize this. Okay, so to add temp tree to the right branch of our syntax tree, what do we need to do? So we go into our syntax tree. Syntax tree currently has a root node, 
constructor for building it. We can get our root node, and then we have the ability to add a op node. What's a node? A node's what we were working on last time. So a node has a token, it has a left child, it has a right child. When we build a node, we set its token, and we set the right and left child to null. We can update the token um, inside of a node, which I think I wrote to do something last time, but I ended up not liking it, right? So we actually don't want to be able to change the token inside of a node. So I'm going to delete that and say that's off limits. Because what I was trying to do was I was going to say, oh, these two nodes, they're exactly where they want to be as long as their payloads are switched. But I don't want to switch payloads. I want to actually physically move nodes around. All right, so we'll allow us to get the token. And this guy should be public. That's an accessor for a private member of our node. We're going to be able to set the left child. This should also be public. We're going to be able to set the right child. This should be public. Add non-op node or add op node. Okay. So we were writing op node last time, correct? <coughs> So what does it mean to add an op node to a node? So if I'm a node and somebody sends me an op node, I got a couple of options, right? What if I am not an op node? So I think we have a picture here in our keynote. So let's say that our tree currently looks like this, okay? So we've read in ID1 equals, and then we've read in this for whatever reason, okay? Now, we've read in this next token. Uh, actually, I, I want to do it this way. Let's say it looks like this. So now I've read in this next token. Well, we're going to create a brand new tree out of this guy, right? Because he's an op. Well, is the root node of this guy an op? Yes, it is. So we're not going to have this tree take over as the new tree. So instead, we're going to add this guy to the right of this tree. So we're going to say add op, and this guy is going to ask his child node to add op. And that's when this guy gets called. So in our, in our syntax tree, we have this method, add op, and he's going to check whether or not he's currently an op node. Uh, we probably actually won't do it at this level, but just following my example right now, let's just assume he knows he's not, uh, that setting an op node to himself is not acceptable. So our tree currently looks like this. We're going to call our tree, say we want to add op node, add this guy. This guy is going to ask his right node to now add an op node. So we're going to ask the question. We're going to say if this dot... root dot get, oh, did I not, I uh, thought I made those public, didn't I? Oh, I don't have get, uh, get left, get right. So I'm going to go ahead and add some getter methods into um, my node for getting the right and getting the left child. So public node get left child. And this returns this dot left child and then public node get right child and this will return this dot right child so now nodes know how to give us their uh, uh, left and right nodes So inside here, we'll say if our roots get right child is equal to null. If that guy does not have a right child, then what do we want to do? Well, where do ops go? Ops go to the right of the current node, correct? If I don't already have a right, uh, a right child, where do I want to put this operator? <coughs> There. So I'll say then this dot root dot set right child to n. And 
That makes sense? So if I'm adding an op node and I'm the root of the syntax tree, we're inside the syntax tree. If, if I don't currently have a right child, we'll go ahead and set that opera operator as my right child. That's the easy solution, right? Otherwise, I need to ask my right child to add an operator. And that's what we started writing here. Add op node. So otherwise I'll say this dot root dot get right child dot add op node n. So we will ask our right child to add an op node. Now we need to go and look at what that means. So add op node. First we ask, am I an operator? If I'm an operator, then what do I do? Well, if my right child is null, set my right child equal to this operator and return null. Else, return this.rightchild.addOpNode. So I'm, this is like my recursive-esque call, right? That's if I'm an op. So this will keep sending it down. If I'm not an operator, what are we doing? This is where things get creepy. So in a situation like this, where this guy is my root node, and he says, I need to add this operator. Is my right node null? It's not. So I'm going to ask my right node to add this operator. Now I get to my right node, and my right node, we ask the question, am I an operator? He's not an operator. So where should this plus side end up being? Right here. And where should this guy end up being? On the left. To his left. Okay. So we got now we got to figure out how we can shift those guys in that position. Well, we know that this guy's left node is going to be this guy. Step one, right? So I can do that real quick. I can say, okay, if I'm in this else, this means that n should go here. And this should be n's left node. Does that make sense? So what I have control over right here is I can say n dot set left child to what? To this. Okay. So I've just created another another pointer back to this. But then I need to somehow, so the picture of what we currently have right now is this guy. That guy's left child points to this guy. This guy's right child points to him. This guy's left child points nowhere. So now we have two separate people, if you will, just to show the actual pointers. We have two separate dudes, both pointing to that node. Go ahead. Do children know about the parents? Do children know about the parents? Uh, do they know what they're... Give me a, a concrete example. Does who know about who? Does ID2 know either of its parents? Like does he know about this guy? Yeah. No. Oh, I did. I did. Well, and that's okay. So that would be a... You did it. You implemented it as a doubling link list. That's, that's fine. Go ahead. Should we set the, the first, the, the original root right child to null and then just move the plus operator as its child? Since it's already uh, the, the other one. So what can we do? What you're suggesting, that, so right now we're at this guy. We're inside of this object, right? Correct? So you want to set this guy's 
right node. Really, what we ultimately want to happen is set that guy's right node to that. Well, now this guy's connected to this guy who's connected to this guy. Right, but if you just, we can't just say equals uh, right child is the... Well, we can't do it at all right now because we have no way of accessing this guy. If we are inside the code for this guy, we can't access this guy. That's as of right now. So our current picture looks like this. So the very first thing I did is I set the node who I need to insert here to be this guy's, <coughs> to make the current guy be his left node. Fine? No harm, no foul? Okay. But now I need to somehow make this happen. I need to make that connection happen. But my current position is right here. How do I do that? Well, one thing I can do, notice I have my add op node returning a node. <coughs> if the job is done, we can say return null. What if the job's not done? Well, I come right here and I say set left node of n to be this guy. Now I've preserved the pointer. Could I then return n? And if I do that, could I also up here say this dot right child return op node and then return this. Now, what I'm saying I might do here, we have to try this, is whenever syntax tree calls add op node on a node, this guy ultimately returns who syntax tree's new write node should be. So, let me come up to syntax tree. So we're going to build a little bit of magic into our add op node at the root, at the node level. And what's this guy going to do? He's going to say, all right, if I can just add it, I will. Okay? So if I'm already an operator and I don't currently have a right child, I'll go ahead and add the guy as my new right child. Then I'm going to return null. And what do I do if I return null if I'm a syntax tree? He checks. If whatever was returned is not equal to null, we're going to do something. But if it's null, everything's fine. I passed in the new operator. Things got set. No harm, no foul. I don't need to update anything. Otherwise, though, if I'm relying on my right child to add this op note, I'm passing the buck. Okay. Um, I suppose I actually could just return null here as well. You don't actually have to return this. It's going to mean the same thing. Null is going to be a little more efficient. I'll show you why. If I'm passing the buck here, that means that I definitely don't need to have my parent update themselves. Correct? Actually, we're going to have to update this, uh, this code right here. And we'll see why here in a second. So if that's the case, when I return this, Temp will be equal to this, 
if temp is not equal to null, is it true that this is not equal to null? That's true. So root is going to set his right child to this, to whatever temp is, which happens to be what it was already set to. So I'm just, I'm wasting my time at, at that point. I'm resetting my right node to the same thing it used to be set to. So for right now, until we get deeper down this rabbit hole, I can actually return null here as well. Which means I can actually take this return statement, put it outside the if else, and if I'm an op and my right child does this, then if my right child is null, set it. Otherwise, tell my right child to add an op node, and right now I'm always going to return null. We're going to see that that's not going to work out as we get farther down the tree. But for right now, at the highest level, I think this is okay. Okay, so that's what we do if we are an op. If we're not an op, what are we going to do? We're going to, if we're not an op, that means that the position I'm currently in needs to be this op node that was just passed in. So I'm going to set the op node that was just passed in, I'm going to set his left child to this guy. That makes this connection right here. Okay? Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to return n, the op node that was passed in. n is going to come out in here, get stored in temp. We're going to say, is, is it true that temp is not equal to null? n is not equal to null, right? <coughs> We're going to update the root's right node to be what n was. So what did that just do? It did this, made that connection. That make sense? So, the root node called upon this node to add this node as an op. This guy isn't an op, so this guy needs to take his place. So what did this guy do? He said, I'm going to set my left child to this guy. Then, this guy returned this guy. And root received that and said, oh, I need to update my right child. That makes sense how that worked. So then what we are, what we visually end up with is that tree, which is what we want, correct? So you see how I kind of built the magic in? Now, what we could have done, and this is what Tina did, is you made your tree kind of a doubling link list where every node also knew about the one level up. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, we might even, depending on how far this rabbit hole goes, we might end up implementing that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so your tree, from any point in the tree, you're able to climb back up the tree. With ours, we can't. We're hiding innuendo inside of method return statements or something like that right now. Uh, I mean that in the biblical sense. So... <laughs> <laughs> check, check. What's up? Somebody, somebody say something. Was it awesome? So. <laughs> All right. So let's go down the rabbit hole of. Let's say our code looks like. this currently. So there's a slightly more complex version of this. <coughs> Ugh. Ugh. There. It's like me at yoga. Uh, imaging. <laughs> <Imaging>. <laughs> Somebody remind me after class sometime to tell you a really funny joke that shouldn't be, shouldn't be recorded. <laughs> but then again, since I just said it shouldn't be recorded, it might as well just be recorded. No, the joke's actually not that bad. I just don't want it recorded. We did not get the Emmy article I know, I didn't have time to look at it. And it's really hard to find Onion articles that don't have profanity in them. Because I won't do that. I won't record profanity. And, uh, 
Okay, so, in any case, let's say our tree currently looks like this. Looks like this guy over here. Forget, forget about this. There's a connection there, trust me. So now we're going to try to add this guy. Well, we can't add it to the root because there's already an app at the root. So we're going to ask our child, our right child, to add it. Well, our right child's already an app. So we're inside node. Am I an op? Yes, I am. Is my right child null? Nope. <laughs> Not null. So what am I going to do? I'm going to ask my right child to add this op node. So I'm going to pass the buck. So I'm going to pass it to this guy. Make sense? Okay. So is this guy, so now let's just walk the path. So now we've asked that guy, this guy right here, to call his add op note. So n comes in. We ask the question, is this guy an op? Is this dude an op? He is not. So we'll get into the else. And what are we going to do? We're going to set n's left child, this guy. We're going to set his left child. equal to this dude. Okay? Um, then, what do we do? Well, then, we return n. We return this guy. And that guy bounces back up here, inside node, and that's what we got right here. Make sense? That's what we got right here. Because op node, add op node always returns something, doesn't it? Returns a node. So, since this guy in his version of the method had n set his left node to this guy, then we return to this up to this guy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, not this. Then we returned n up to this guy. That's these two lines of code right here. Set n's left node to be me, this guy right here, then return n. So n then gets returned as temp right there at this level. Okay? Now, does root need to do anything in this case? If this is our current setup, what needs to happen? What should happen next if this is what we're looking at? That needs to happen, correct? But do we need root to do anything? So, question is, is it cool that we return null to root? What he doesn't know won't hurt him? He doesn't need to know the mayhem that happened below the top level in the hierarchy, right? Okay. So it's okay if I return null there. So we can have that global return statement for null up here. Because we're going to handle it locally. But since temp was returned, and it returns something other than null, I know that this guy's new right child must be this guy. Make sense? So we're going to say, if temp not equal to null, what are we going to do? We're going to say, this dot set right child to temp. And that does this connection right here, which basically just built this tree. That makes sense? So some people might look at this and say, you know, isn't this kind of repetitive that we're doing the same thing here? as we're doing here, it's really pretty similar code, right? The difference is, is that all nodes do this. We're actually treating the top level syntax tree as a special case. That's what's happening here. It just happens to be that top level syntax trees manage a single root node. Make sense? Okay. So now, now that I've asked if this makes sense, now really ask your questions, because 
several of you must be confused. Um. Okay, I, I don't necessarily disagree, but you don't want to arbitrarily add complexity to your tree unless you need it. Is it really beneficial to be able to climb back up the tree? From a heuristic standpoint? <laughs> okay, so you want every node to have a left node, a right node, and a parent node. That's 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 how you set yours up? Yeah, I didn't get this deep in my mind because I ran into some problems, but that's okay. where I was heading. <coughs> Go ahead, Scott. Well, I, I started with a similar approach to that. So I found that instead of doing that, I basically used the, the add off method with a two parameter method where it took in a current node and, an, and then a new node. The new node could be the new tree we created, and then it could detect you know, do I have a right? Okay, so that's really a third option. You had add op take in the previous parent. So he didn't have to pass that buck. So add up never returned anything for yours. No. So for yours, you did this. So actually, from a coolness factor, I think my solution is the, the coolest. Okay, But actually, from a um, efficiency, your solution is probably the easiest. Because it, it allows you to have a lot of flexibility. If you always know who your parent is, you can kind of monkey bar through your tree as you need to. So you've given yourself tons and tons of flexibility by being able to walk up the tree at not that much memory efficiency. So it's not like your solution sucks. You know, it's kind of like adding flexibility just for the sake of adding flexibility. You know, like that's not what the cool kids would do. Okay, but there's nothing wrong with it. So, so... So I kind of like Scott's approach. Scott said he is going to do this. When you add an op node, he takes in the root node. I'm sorry, the node we're adding as well as, let's just say parent, right? You took in two parameters. The node we're going to add as well as who called me, right? Okay. So then what you say here, uh, you have this guy not returning anything. So he's a void. If I have a right child, go ahead and set it. I don't, I don't need my parent in that case. Else, ask my right child to add the op node, passing him the node we're going to add and also passing him myself. Then we don't need to ask this question. Um, let's, oh, we don't return anything, so we'll get rid of that. Okay, otherwise, if I'm not an op, what am I going to do? I'm going to set ends, left child, equal to me. Then I'm going to say parent dot set right child equal to n. Like that. Pretty much. Did it, I, did, I actually did it so that like the parent was the, the current node. And then if the parent is the current node, I guess what, what would be the parent node in yours? It's my current node. So he's checking for a child on either side. Well, right. So the parent is the current node as I passed it down right here. So the only thing we need to change up here at the syntax tree level is. <coughs> We're passing an n as well as root. So right off the bat, we're passing add op node, the node we want to add, as well as who I am, 
the node at the top as the parent. Node then receives those two pieces of information, N and parent. He goes through the motions. He either just says, oh, I don't have a right child. I am an operator, but I don't have a right child, so just go ahead and add N to the right child, and we don't need our parent in this case. Thank you for being here, but your services are no longer necessary. Otherwise, if I do have a right child, then I need to ask my right child to add the op node. So who am I going to add? I'm going to ask him to add N, but then I need to pass myself along as the parent in case he needs to update my notes. Okay? Else, we're going to go ahead and set our le N's left child to this guy and then set parent, the root of this guy's right child, equal to N. Yeah, I think this is a good solution. It's definitely the, this is probably the hybrid between your and my solution. Your solution is the most uh, flexible. My solution is the, probably the most complex, but almost like show-off-y. Um, Scott's solution is probably the best solution. I would say is, this is probably a correct, this is probably the correct solution. Go ahead. Question. Would it be a correct statement to say that anytime you use a constructor, you have to use the word this? Like not necessarily. Okay. Something about my constructors is not working. Well, let me explain why I always use this in there. Notice that I have a field inside node called token. I'm a big advocate of passing in variables that are that mean something. So to not use this, I would have to have our node take in something not named token as its parameter. But instead, I have it take in token. So in order to set this guy equal to this guy, I have to say this dot token equals token. Because this references, this dot token references the token uh, field owned by this instance of node. We're just saying token right here references the most local definition of token, which is right here. But if I just had this take in something called T, then I can say token is equal to T. And I don't need to say the this dot. I wish I could remember why, but I do. Whenever, like I had a table that had a string token, like something like that. And then whenever I called it, it would say, I would pass it like, supposed to, and it would say, you pass this method of string, it requires no parameters. Okay. I think the why, because I clearly had parameters. Okay, well, email it to me or something, I'm sure I can tell you what this, it's probably something stupid. I texted you, you should know it. No, you didn't. <laughs> yes, me. When? Uh, like, yeah, this is why you're fighting. Communication. <laughs> well, I didn't prove it to you, but my phone did, so... <laughs> You said two nights ago? Oh, I see it now. It came, it was a random number. It must have, the timing must have been bad. Like, I didn't have you on my phone. Yeah. And I must have gotten another random, like, weird phone number at the same time. Well, next time, text me, like, again. So if I don't, you don't hear back within, like, an hour. Here, I'll add you as a contact. I'm in my bedtime. All of your days, your bedtime. <laughs> Man, I gotta make a, I gotta make a, uh, a guess at your last name. For sure. B o e r c h a r d t. How many letters did I get right? How do you spell it? B o r c h a r. Oh, yeah, I basically had everything right, except I said B-O-E, instead of just B-O-R, or instead of just B-O. <laughs> yeah, so I had way more than 50% right. Oh, okay, well, in any case, you didn't give me enough, you gave me the same amount of information you just gave me here in the text message, so. I had submitted the thing, so you can check on I see. I figured once you responded, then I would elaborate. Yeah, I, I, I apologize. <laughs> all right. Probably not. Um, all right, I, li I like Scott's solution. I think Scott's solution is the most correct solution. Um, my solution was um, arbitrarily complex for what we were trying to accomplish. But still cool.
I was hiding secret messages and return values. If you add a note backwards, it's probably a message from Satan. <laughs> was that uh, Austin Powers? All right, so that's what we do if we are adding a op. So I think that works for our opera op the operator operator nodes. That works for operator nodes. All right, so then going back here, if we're not adding an operator node, we must be adding a what? public void add non-op node. This guy will take a node n as a parameter. And where do non-ops go? Mm. I think Scott's about to tell us that we're not quite done with adding operators. I guess with what, like with the non op Caveat is if it's a literal, it can't go on the left. That'd be, well, oh, well, not necessarily. Unless it's an assignment state. I mean, I guess it's not an assignment operator, then it's good. But. Oh, I get what you're that, that would come in the next step to see if we have the semantics of our code is incorrect. Oh. Yeah, you're saying that we couldn't. I mean, so for right now, as the token stream comes in, we could say, 60 equals 5. That's not going to fly at the next level, but for right now, in terms of a syntax tree, of those are the token stream, that, that's legit. That's, that's fine. Um, we're obviously going to shoot that down because you can't redefine numbers. We can't just arbitrarily say 60, you're now 5. Just for now on, <laughs> so we're speaking in code. Okay. Um, but there's something we didn't do here. Um, so at the syntax tree level, we added the op node. If we don't have a right child, go ahead and add this guy as the right child. Otherwise, we're going to ask our right child to add um, this guy. Where do we run into the situation where we have a brand new tree? Um, if we're adding an op node, we need to ask the question whether or not our root is currently an op node. If it's not, then this new guy becomes the new tree. Correct? So before we do any of this, we need to ask the question. If this dot root dot is op. If that's the case, then do all of this crap. So if I already have an operator as my root node, this tree is the is we're we're working with the good tree. Now we need to do all the crap we just did. Else, if I'm not, if I currently don't have a root node that is an op, what do I need to do? Well, I know my root node is actually a what? We know my root node is actually a non-op, correct? So after we write non-op, we can ask n to add non-op to himself at his left, as his left node, right? Okay. Um, for right now, we could do something like this as like a temporary solution. We can say n dot set left child equal to this dot root. Then we can say this dot root is equal to n. Does that make sense? So I'm saying n is going to be my new root. In order to make him my new root, he's only going to be my new root because the current root is not an operator. Since he's not an operator, he's going to go to the left of n. And we're at the syntax tree side of things. So we know we're at the top of the top of the stack. Top of the tree, rather. So we're going to set n's left child to be whatever the root currently is. Then we'll update the root to point to n. So this differs a little bit from our, our syntax we had on the board, 
where we created a brand new tree and then set the tree equal to the other tree. We've accomplished the same thing. We just did it internally. All right, that makes sense? Okay, so let's at least get started with our add non-op thing here. Uh, at least think about it for a second. So add non-op, what does that mean? If we're adding a non-op to our syntax tree, where does it go? Well, it goes to the left, but only if we don't currently have something at the left. If we already have something at the left, where does it go? It goes to the left or the right. We have to ask our right node to add a non-op. Uh, non so simple solution here, if this dot root dot get left child, if that guy's not equal to null, I'm sorry, if that guy is equal to null, I mean, could have gone either direction. I'm just doing the easy solution. So if my if the root's left child is currently null, then we'll just say this dot root dot set left child to n. Done. Right? Otherwise, well, otherwise, we need to ask our right child to add a non-op. Go ahead. Good point. So if this dot, um, here, let's just do this as an else if. It'll structurally look a little better. Else if this dot root dot get right child is equal to null, then we can add this guy. This dot root dot set right child to n, then we have our else. So add it to the left if we can, add it to the right if we can, otherwise ask our right node to add this non-op. And that's what we'll start writing next time. Make sense? Okay. I will see everybody on Friday. Don't forget to tip your waitress. No, today's Wednesday.